North Asia correspondent Mark Willisey reporting. Physics and chemistry are the bane of many a high school student, but what if we're pitching the ideas to them too late? Can eight-year-olds absorb atomic theory? One teacher has asked that question in a bold experiment at a Brisbane primary school, and he says it shows young minds are much more advanced than we think. Matt Wordsworth reports. And the electrons are negative. And Ithaca Creek State School in Brisbane's western suburbs is a typical primary school. But this is definitely not the usual fare for eight and nine-year-olds. And what do we call a substance that is made up of just one kind of atom? Yep, an element. An element. That's perfect. For 25 years, Ian Stewart taught physics and chemistry to high school students. But it was a conversation with his young son that gave him an idea. My son, um, Tom, was asking me questions about science and when I explained it, he got it straight away. There was no barrier to him understanding the concepts as I explained. And I kept it getting more and more complex, more and more abstract, and he absorbed it all. Ian's son, Tom, was in my class, and Tom approached, uh, Ian approached the school to try and uh, introduce some of these concepts. So a number of the teachers at the school were willing to give it a go and I was one of them and uh, basically it's just been this experiment that sort of rolled on from there. The year three and four composite class at Ithaca Creek is now learning science usually reserved for years 10 and 11. Now what we've got here is an example of the lightest possible atom in the universe which of course is hydrogen. It's also as hands-on as possible they don't just learn about the periodic table and how the elements are ordered by weight, they feel the difference between carbon, magnesium, silver and gold. Yeah, gold is way heavier than silver if you've got an equal amount of it. Ian Stewart even delves into the structure of the atom, introducing protons, neutrons and electrons. What are we going to do with lithium, Izzy? We're going to, um, we're going to put three protons and then nucleus. Exactly. And then we're going to put, um, because the first shell can only hold two um, electrons, so we're going to put one electron on the second shell. It's number 10 on the periodic table, is it? Yeah. So what's it got? Classroom teacher Adrian Quinn says he can see his students understand the abstract concepts, which are so different to what's in their normal science lessons. Well, from my perspective, I've been really impressed and surprised too. The kids have been really engaged, they've adapted to it well. Uh, their recall has been quite good, so he can introduce a concept and a few weeks later something will come up and I'll relate it back to that concept and you can see that the kids oxygen, get that. Oxygen, chlorine and milk. Excellent. What's the kind of science that they're normally taught? Uh, it's a science about the real world, but it's the world that they can see and touch and feel and a lot of the science approach is procedural. So it's what's a fair test and how do we assess what, what the human impact has been on something. So it's things that they can see and touch, but it doesn't go down to, well, so if we're talking about water doing erosion, they'd never get to the concept of, well, what actually is water? Both teachers would like to see a formal research project to test what they've observed and hope the science curriculum will change. It's thrilling that we're discovering that they're able to um, grasp much more than we thought they could. We, we can raise our expectations of kids. What kind of building blocks do you think that you're laying here that will help the children later on? I think they're huge because these are fundamental concepts about how the universe is made up. And to know those sorts of things now then helps them with every step of their education. Australia's chief scientist is supportive he also points to a project in Western Australia where Year 6 and 7 students are being taught Einstein's theory of general relativity. The idea that we should um, stretch our students and, uh, and really um, teach them contemporary science in interesting ways uh, is a critical path to the future of science in this country. Shiny? No. Yeah. Is it magnetic? There are ample reports from all around the world that we've tended to teach science in a way that is very traditional um, and uh, in essence pretty old fashioned. The students at Ithaca Creek certainly are fans of the new approach. Well I usually think that science is really boring and like not, not fun 
but when Mr. Stewart came in and he started giving us all this stuff, I'm like, this is actually quite fun. We've um, made a molecule which has t 10 hydrogens, and five, which are these, five carbons, which are these, two oxygens, and one nitrogen. And nitrogen. what's it called? It, uh, two nitrogen. It's called glutamine. Glutamine. Do you know that this is the kind of stuff that like older kids learn? They do in grade 11 or 10 or something. And how does that make you feel? Special. Oh, she is special. That word's worth reporting and that's the program for tonight. We'll be back at the same time tomorrow. But for now, good night.